Hi everyone. Today I'm going to start with a small story. When I used to study, I used to really enjoy sales and marketing subjects. I used to score pretty well too. And I have won a few marketing test free competitions as well. But when I started my career in sales, I used to struggle a lot. I still remember how long it took me for making the first sale. Same goes with data, data science as well. Learning data science and application of data science in real life are two different things. Corporate data science is not, is not yet a subject in most of the universities. In a learning environment, the data set that is provided to us is generally very clean. There isn't enough effort goes for the data cleaning or data transformations. But in a real life, we need to work on identifying all the data set that is required. The data set that is required would come up with a lot of issues. There would be a lot of missing data. There would be a lot of data issues as such, which requires transformations. And in some cases, the data sets that is required for us would be present across multiple systems. So bringing them all together itself would be a bit task. Second, in a learning environment, there is no pressure on the time generally. Whereas in the real life, there is usually a huge pressure in getting your output done. And third, the performance of the model in a learning environment doesn't have a huge impact. It doesn't cause any damage. Whereas in a real life, the performance of our model can have a huge negative impact to, to the organization. In this video, we are going to see about the seven commonly made mistakes by someone who is starting their career in data science. We are going to see each one of them. We are also going to see how we can av avoid each one of them. The first mistake is not spending enough time to understand the problem. As a, as a new data scientist, there would be a lot of eagerness and people used to hurry things up in order to move towards the actual building the model. How to build the predictive model as such, what type of models to use, but there isn't enough focus given to the problem as such, which is absolutely wrong. We need to spend enough time to have a complete understanding about the problem. How can we achieve this? First is, there needs to be a couple of sessions scheduled with the actual business owner in order to understand the business problem statement from their point of view, as well as the objective or the output that is desired by the business owner. Second, we need to identify all the relevant stakeholders and we need to have a schedule a meeting with them in order to understand about their point of view. If possible, it would be really helpful to talk to the actual customers and understand what's happening. These are all some of the methods in order to collect the information that is required for us to know about the problem. The second commonly made mistake is not using enough open source library. As a new data scientist, people would be much interested in building their own things, which is not good. Whenever there is an option for us to use an open source library that is well documented, we have to use it. It helps us in saving a lot of time, which can be later used in actually focusing on the real problem. So whenever there is an opportunity, whenever there is an option to use an open source library, please go ahead and use it. The third mistake is not using all the required data set. In a real life scenario, the data would be spread across multiple source systems and the formats, especially with the dates, and few attributes could be different across each of the systems. So there would be generally a huge amount of effort in order to collect them from all the different sources and in order to make them aligned with each other. So someone who's starting their career in data science, what would, what would they do is generally they stick with the, the main data source and not spend enough time in aggregating all these additional data sources and proceed with the actual problem solving, which is absolutely wrong. We need to spend enough time to ensure that all the required data sets are being collected or all aligned with each other. The fourth mistake is not spending enough time in the data manipulation. The data set that we are going to solve could have a lot of missing data, could have a lot of outliers as well. We have to ensure that there is enough data manipulation methods or in place in order to handle all these issues. If we are going to go ahead with the missing values as well as with the outliers as such, the performance of the model will definitely be very bad. 
in a real life about 70 to 80 percent of the time in a data science project would be involved in feature engineering which includes data collection data manipulation and bringing up with the features that is required for the actual model building the fifth mistake is not knowing enough about the technique or the algorithm that we are applying it is really important to understand to have a complete understanding about the technique or the algorithm that we are going to use if you are not able to explain the method in a very simple terms to the business stakeholders it means that you are not ready yet so some of the basic questions that we need to be ready is we need to have a good understanding about the theory behind the technique or the algorithm that we are going to use and we should be able to explain this in a very simple terms to the business stakeholders second we need to know why we are going to use this algorithm or a technique in a particular problem and third how using this would help us in solving the problem so this, these are some of the basic questions for which as a data scientist we need to have the answer and we should be able to explain the business stakeholders in a very simple terms the sixth mistake is not having a monitor in place for the model validation the model that we are going to build today could be performing really well for the data set that we have right now but as we go in the into the future the characteristics of the data as well as the characteristics of the subjects that is in that we are studying could differ for example if we pick up predicting the el electricity usage the model that we have right now the one that we have trained based on the current data set could be predicting well maybe for time being but as we go into the future the characteristics of the data would change that is the customer's energy usage behavior could change maybe because of the change in circumstance maybe the family size of the particular family has been increased or maybe they have moved from one house to a different house so their electricity usage behavior has also been changed if we are going to use the same old model to make the prediction we are going to go around so we need to ensure that there is enough monitoring in place to ensure the performance of the model is being monitored continuously and depending upon the situation we need to ensure that the model that we are going to use is retrained and well adapted for the new data set last but not least not focusing on the ethical issues the model that we use would generally have data such as age gender race disabilities knowingly or unknowingly because of usage of these information the output of our model could be discriminated based on any of these parameters so it is really important to ensure that the outcome of our model is not discriminated by any of these attributes we need to ensure that there is no unfair discrimination by our algorithm there is enough transparency and there is no reinforcement of uh, human biases into the algorithm as such this is really important to ensure that we are not for not falling for any unethical practices these are all some of the mistakes that is commonly made by someone who is starting their career in data science if you are more interested in similar kind of content please subscribe to my channel and provide your support thank you